What's up, car friends? Thanks for joining us again here at Wheelie really Cool Videos, the car show about modified cars based in Southern California with your hosts, Big Stu and Big Idris. As always, thanks to our thanks to Phoenix Studios, New Pod Loft, and thanks to our producers, Matt and Chris, for their continuing support. So we're uh, going to start it off with a really cool find, as always. Uh, this is just something awesome that we found on either social media, YouTube, somewhere out on the internet. One of a million things that we see yeah. every single day, but of course there are things that stand out to us. Yeah, and this one was special to me. First of all, it's from Stanceworks, which Stanceworks is one of the hottest automotive blogs. Um, it has throughout the, I mean, it's, it's, definitely, awesome, it's definitely established a place, uh, a place for itself. Uh, Mike Burroughs, Andrew Ritter, both incredible yeah, artists, photographers, serious. have shot some of the most incredible pictures I've seen, as well as built some yeah, really yeah. amazing cars. They have moved, I believe, from Tennessee to Southern California. That's right, yeah. Um, and that's another thing that you see here. Yeah. A lot of people coming out to California because it has become the epicenter for the car modifying culture, yeah, um, as well as scene. some amazing builders out here. So. Yeah. So this post, when I saw uh, Stanceworks post it, it was true to my heart because it's basically my first car. It's a Volkswagen Jetta Mark I, uh, 1984 in maroon, which is exactly my first car yep, that my parents gave had. me. Thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, they lit the Volkswagen tuning car modding bud with that one. Bug, not bud. <laughs> um, and this car is so fresh. I mean, this one's slammed which I find amazing. I could never get mine low. I didn't have coils yeah, on it. Maybe. I had suspension. I had a cup kit. Okay. Um, Autotech H&R, springs Auto-Tech. Okay. and a Bilstein shocks. Nice. But of course, what, whatever happens when you don't get coils, you lower it with a static drop and then you're like, hmm, I wish the front was like an inch lower. So what did I do? I don't even know if you've heard of this. I got mm-hmm. spring caps. Where it's, spring caps? It's the upper spring seat that's uh, slightly lowered, so it's got like a, okay. s- so it, the spring seat sits into the spring cap a little bit more, so it gives you like, I don't know, a quarter of an inch more, <laughs> and I spent $100 on parts and probably $100 on labor to get those installed. Wow. Um, it does look phenomenal. You know, I, I absolutely yeah. love the, the, the color, the wheels. I'm not sure if those are... Um, They're not... What is it? Not Nothel wheels. Nothel wheels. Style they or could be. They're um, period correct, whatever they are. They are definitely period correct wheels. This one's got the European front end as well as the European front and rear bumpers, which I actually had after I got in a car accident um, in my car. I was like, oh, it needs new front and rear bumpers? Oh, we can get the Perfect. European Euro ones. bumpers. Done. Yeah. Um, and those were awesome. They're smaller. What's the, they're shorter bumpers. Smaller. They're not five mile per hour. So my old bumpers actually had giant. shocks in them. Mm-hmm. Where which you, you can adjust. I don't know if you can adjust them, but you could slam into stuff, oh, and, and it was and just was like fine. no problem. You just Did you bounce slam right. Into stuff? Uh, I hit some stuff. Okay. I mean, I was 16 right, right, when right. I got the car. Yeah. Um, I remember slamming into a stop sign in a mall parking lot. I mean, it's like <laughs> a big, wide open parking lot, and you know, I was hooning around, being definitely unsafe. And hooning then around. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh shit!" There's a stop sign, and like in the middle of nowhere, it's like a pole, like a metal 90 uh, degree aluminum pole sticking yeah. out with a stop sign. And I slammed the shit out of it <laughs> and just had that thing going out at like 45 degrees. So I just reversed and went and parked. It was fine. There's no problems. But this car is awesome. It, it, it yeah, reminds as me. As always, it, it looks phenomenal. It reminds you. It's my first car, man. Yeah. And, and it bums me out. I wish I never would have got rid of it. I mean, obviously, as a car guy, there's always a progression. You, you got to get rid of your old car to get the new car. Of course. Uh, yeah. Not many people can just afford to stockpile all their cars, let alone. And you've built. Store I mean, them. Some really, really cool cars. Thank you, thank I mean, you. Is it, had, are they wheelie cool? They are wheelie cool. <laughs> um, I absolutely loved your Mark III GTI. Nice, Mark thanks. Mark III GTI, TDI, uh, black on gold BBS RS wheels. Um, yeah. I remember the interior was uh, phenomenal. It yeah. just looked tremendous. Thanks. Um, it was your daily driver, I believe. It was. That was a fun car because at the time, you know, it was only like five years ago. So I was older. I had more money. And I was looking for a good daily, and I actually bought that Mark III in Philadelphia yep, by, uh, from a guy named Mike. Uh-huh. And he's famous for building good car builds. So he did a lot of diesel swaps. He likes diesels. And he did this diesel swap, 
And I remember seeing on the classified ads, you know, one night when I'm just uh, dream shopping, mm -hmm. and I was like, whoa, this thing's for sale. Uh, on the other side of the country. See what cars side. do to us? Making us go cross country. So what I do, I sold my Scion XB, and I talked my wife into letting me get this. Mm -hmm. We flew across country with our two dogs, miniature dachshunds, so it's not like a huge dog, but still, that car was the shit. I love that daily driver. I love older Volkswagens. This, this one, one on Stance Works great. is yeah. fresh to death. It is exactly my car, but way cooler. If I would have had this in high school, um, I wouldn't have been the band geek that everybody associated me as. I would have been the cool guy in the Slammer Jetta. <laughs> but such is life. Yeah, such is life. So what are we talking about today, man? Uh, SEMA, man. SEMA. SEMA was incredible. You went to SEMA? We, we went to SEMA. We went to SEMA. Dude, it almost seems like a dream. SEMA is something for us um, being car enthusiasts. You definitely want to go to SEMA. Basically, for us, we've wanted to go yeah. since we were young. Since I, I mean, I was 15, 14 years old. And it's got this like stigma around it because SEMA, it's huge. It's the biggest modified car convention in the world mm -hmm. based in Las Vegas, US. Um, but you can only go if you're in the car industry. It's and a car industry event meant exactly. for people working in the car industry. It's a, tra it's a trade show. It's, yeah. it's a very large trade show. You get some of the most incredible Huge. builds, uh, worldwide builds, amazing yeah. car releases. Just, yep. uh, it's, yeah, everything is based around SEMA, I feel like, for the whole year. Everybody brings people, out their biggest projects, exactly, their yeah. newest products. It's if all it, kept up for SEMA. And then the whole year is based on SEMA content and trickling out. If you're trying to get car work done in <laughs> September <laughs> yeah. uh, at a shop, That's good right. luck because that car is going to be working on their SEMA car. Especially in SoCal Especially or in Arizona exactly. or Vegas or, or this Vegas. Western, Western United States. Definitely. The later months of the year are spent on SEMA, SEMA builds. builds. Um, and some of these cars that we have seen have just been incredible. Yeah. Um, so growing up, we've heard about SEMA, always wanted to go to SEMA, but because we don't work in the car industry, we couldn't go. I'm an IT guy. As I do computers for a living. Uh, Idris is just a pimp. He just pimps uh, right. and, and no you know hustles deal. and uh, is just generally cool. He's a stylist. General, He's just cool. He helps people be cool for a living. <laughs> uh, that's what he's helped me do at least. <laughs> they, say, they say it's not easy, but really it is pretty easy. He makes it easy. That's why we call him easy. I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. We but we've always wanted to go. Yeah. Um, always. And then this year, you know, you know, certain events led to me and Adris wanting to start a car channel, car YouTube channel. You know, we're constantly around cars. Um, we both love modified cars. I mean, I like IT, but let's be fair, I love cars. That, Same. That's I mean, my passion. Exactly. And if you're not doing something that you're passionate about, you're you know, really it's not work. living. It's work. It's exactly. work. So, you know, I was like, you know what? Enough is enough, man. I'm gonna get a camera, I'm gonna start filming stuff, and let's see where it goes. Yep. And not only did we get approved to go to SEMA, but we got media passes, media credentials for SEMA, which means we don't have to pay, I think, the $20 for the ticket, um, and we get cool badges that say media, which yep. just made me feel maybe as cool as you feel every Definitely. day. Definitely, people get, yeah. Out, yeah. <laughs> people get out, of your, out of your way to take pictures. Yeah, they respect uh, you maybe a little bit more. You, yeah. But it was cool as hell. So we had the ability to go, now we had tickets. Um, Adris has some friends in Vegas that we were able to stay with, um, and it worked out perfect with his days off and, and my availability. We shot out to SEMA, covered the first two days, which is what, Tuesday and Wednesday? It's Tuesday and a Wednesday, and you know what? Um, we saw some amazing builds. We didn't get a chance to see everything, but yeah, two it days, was... Two day, SEMA goes from Tuesday to Friday, so it's a four-day total event. It does. And we thought, oh, two days, that could be enough. We underestimated no. the size no. of SEMA, definitely. Um, SEMA is enormous. It's huge. Um, there are all sorts of different halls. There's upper halls, lower halls, yep. outside areas. Yep. There was cars later on that we had found out about yep. that we never got to see. Um, yeah, we're so big fans of 1552, the wheel company. And we spent the essentially the whole first day, not the whole time but we wanted to go to 1552 say what's up to matt say what's mm -hmm. up to mark be like yo what's up guys how you doing the whole day we couldn't find it they're <laughs> like where's the wheel where's 1552 they're in the south hall well, we can't find it well it turns out there's two south halls there's a lower south hall there's the upper south, upper hall. south hall mad confusing so many cars there's 
the West Hall, North Hall, Central Hall. All sorts of halls. There's, there's outside. A, where there's like, a Harry Potter <laughs> hall that you can't find. You got to go to nine and three quarters hall. Yeah, you just got to run straight through the wall. Yeah. Uh, there was a whole other side exhibit area where like Audi was. We didn't even see that. Yeah. Um, it was just so much. I think four, you didn't even struggle to see it all in four days. It but is huge. What we did see was... Oh. Incredible. S some amazing cars. Um, let's start with the H&R booth. A car that basically everybody was waiting for. Um, it was a car that... Two cars, practically. Two cars, but which one? Basically. Hit them. Hit them with uh, one. So we'll hit them with the first <laughs> one. Uh, this is a car that actually was built by Mike Burroughs, who's actually one of the riders and uh, originators of Stance Works. Yep. Um, this car was... When it was built, it, it definitely created you know it, it almost created trends it it it, it created hype on the you talking about the was, original build i'm talking about the original so speak build. on the original build. Uh, this is like the second appearance of the car which is called rusty slammington it's a bmw it e, is an e28, e28 5 series um the car has been um originally a four door ori yeah originally a four door it's been through several different stages yep. everything from a complete rusted out look. Yep. I believe it started out, it was a black car. It had yep. some, uh, all sorts of different wheels. Um, Check out the Stance Works Instagram and blog to see the full progression of this car. Cause it's crazy to it see is. it black four door stock and like slightly modded to, to the second phase, which describe the second phase. Cause uh, I never really knew about the car until this year. The so. second phase uh, was a phase that definitely blew me away. Um, the car, I remember it, I believe it was, it was rusted out. Yeah, um, with the shark mouth. The shark mouth on the on side. The side. Yeah. Um, that's something that you've seen replicated by a lot of people yeah. in, the, in, the, in the car industry. Um, it had like polished gold. Wheels. It had, they were, I believe they're Renault turbos That's right. uh, that were rebuilt by, by Rotiform. Yeah. They were stepped up to 18 inch, 24 karat gold faces. Oh, they're 24 K? I believe they're, yeah, they were 24 karat gold. Um, the car was bagged. It was chopped top. It was, uh, yeah, the roof, the roof was chopped. It was, yeah. the car was raw it as was, heck. But it was like built. It was, yeah, I believe it, it had a, um, a JDM motor in it. I don't know if it was a 1JZ or 2JZ, hmm. some sort of turbo motor in it. Uh, and the only thing I that can car? remember. Oh, sorry. Uh, I remember one thing, of a video, actually, I, when, uh, when it was at H2O, which is a show out on the East Coast, H2O Waterfest, mm. and the car was on the road, and somebody got a video of him driving by and he just dragged the car and sparks everywhere yeah. it's rusted it's got bright gold wheels it, it looked amazing and it's, it's dragging it's, frame and, and it's shooting dragging up sparks. frame and shooting sparks <laughs> something that you see out of a movie and yeah. for me that's what I, it just it definitely caught my i mean it caught my attention early before that long before that but when i saw that i was just it it, yeah. it made it, it made the theme of the car i just felt like this this is an insane car yeah. this is a crazy build that's crazy. um and that car rusty slammington i believe the story was that the car burned down um, in Mike Burroughs' garage, don't know the story behind that. Maybe you can find some stories yeah. on forums. But uh, the car burned down, and lo and behold, how many years, uh, maybe like four or five years later, the car comes back, and it's at Cena. And everybody has been waiting for the car. The car is now yeah. two-door. It's complete um, wide body, sort of like a uphill uh, like, climber, yeah, like, you like know, hill climber, hill climb. It's all tube car, framed, tube framed. Yeah, BMW motor in there. Push uh, rod suspension. Yep. Uh, basically, he he just did everything to this thing. If it's like a full race car now, full race seats, full tube frame chassis. It's just insane. Like he already had the car here, and like you know, as a normal build, it uh -huh. would be finished, and then he came back and just took it to a whole nother level. It's gotta yeah. be the most photographed and talked about car in SEMA. Words can't do his justice. There's so many intricacies and the the whole side fenders come off. They're uh, held on by like cotter pins. Um, 
it's just insane. The, it the is. Car yeah, you got to check it out. You got to see the coverage that we have on uh, on the YouTube channel. It's it, it's incredible. It blows your mind. Yeah, I don't. It does. The guy just to even a be able to dream that mm. and b be able to build it. It came out amazing, and just just the dream and the idea and everything behind that thing is incredible. It's got push rod suspension, tubular chassis, and crazy wide body with the panels that come off. Yeah. I th yeah. You know, at that what, point. It's, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's like a exactly. transformer car. Exactly. Like a it's transformer amazing. car. Um, so that was H&R booth. And like we probably spent an hour at the H&R booth. We did. That wasn't <laughs> the only car that we saw at the H&R nope, booth. Nope. H&R um, booth was fire. See? John Seibel's uh, 964, which is what, at the time the newest RWB, which is the big wide body uh, Porsche. But it was, it's, it's got to be the most tasteful and kind of understated of all the RWBs. Definitely. It, it doesn't it, have... Uh, any loud colors it doesn't have rwbs no graphics have been, no graphics um rwbs have, have definitely built been built yeah in all sorts of different stages yeah. i absolutely love this color yeah um the kit looks incredible um the wheel as choice. always the wheel choice work meisters basically the same wheels you had on your uh, same wheels gti that I had right on my there GTI. if you ever own a set of meisters don't sell them because you're gonna regret it yeah they're fresh um they're fresh. He yeah, sold I, his because they were only eight inches wide, so he was hating on them, oh, even though they look looked money. killer. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's not the right amount of stretch, and the, <laughs> even though the fitment's good, the stretch isn't right. I need it wider. He's tripping. Are you yeah. tripping? We were tripping, right? I was tripping. Yeah, I, I sold them to make some money. You made some money. But I, made, I made a little bit of money. Those wheels are hustling. fresh. Yeah. And he's got brakes on that. That car had an interior. It had like a, a black blue cross stitch, subtle, but a little. You know, I had a black with the blue, a little bit of a flare. Mm -hmm. It was a full build. It wasn't Love just a car. 964 with the RWB kit in it. It had an interior, had awesome wheels. It had uh, projector headlights, um, but it was all tastefully done. And uh, GT3 dual exit center exhaust. It did, yeah. Which is... Uh, that's killer. That's I, I, just killer. I loved, I loved the color on it. I love the color scheme. Yeah. Um, it, it looked phenomenal. Yeah. And John Seibel, um, uh, is a cool guy. Is always John Seibel's cool great builds. guy. You know, I've, I've uh, talked to him a couple times. He's, he's been somebody who's been in the car community for a long time. Um, he's had some of the most incredible builds from a. And you told me basically an RWB Challenger. Yeah. Uh, which is when RWB first came out. Um, or I guess when they were first gaining their notoriety, RWB, if you're unfamiliar, it's a Japanese company. Um, they do make kits. Uh, they have a, a builder by the name of Nakai-san who will come out and build the car for you or put, put the, yeah, the but kit it, on there for every you. Every RWB kit is installed by Nakai-san, right? It is, yeah. There, he flies there are, out. He flies out. For everyone, um, which is awesome. You do have to pay for him to yeah. fly out. You have to have all that done. Um, now, RWB is also, for me, when they first came out, they reminded me very similar to, there was a company called, by the name of Sunburst. Oh, I never um, heard of that. Back in the day, there was a company by the name of Sunburst who, who had these wide body kits that looked very similar to RWB. Mm. So a lot of people compare them to that. But you know, just like anything nowadays, yeah. you gain inspiration from things right. and you use things to influence the way you're gonna build your kids so and the quality um, of these rwb kits are awesome they are but one of the favorite stories of the john seibel that you told me about was that he actually he's a, a graphic artist and a graphic he designer yeah. and he actually competed in a dodge challenger rendering contest he did yeah to build to i believe win his last challenger yeah so dodge life. put on a contest render a cool challenger and you'll win one so he did. He did. And, and did. And he won the car. And the coolest part is yeah. he built the car to look like his render. Um, so basically when Badass. RWB was first gaining notoriety, he had built this charger. Um, I believe it was a flat black on, yep. on gold. Yep. You know, flat gold. Meisters? They look like Meisters. They were, they were five, five spoke, spoke classics. Wheels. I know RWB yeah. uses some five spoke wheels. I'm not yeah. familiar who the builder is of those, but... Yeah. Um, they they did look phenomenal. They the car perfect. was the car was bagged. The car was you know it it, it was on it point. looked great. I don't know what kind of motor it was. I'm yeah. sure it was the stock. Yeah, um, but it was on point. He it was definitely it was cool. That's a cool story. Um, so the, also at the H and R booth they had like a SQ5 Audi um, SUV kind of understated yeah. like slight little mod. They also had a really phenomenal. nice uh, 
991 Porsche Turbo S. They did on Champion Wheels. Champion Wheels. What, uh, what was the license plate? Uh, license plate said Champion. Champ. Champion. Yeah, champion. Yeah. Clean built. Red interior. It did. It was a white exterior, red interior. Yeah. Basically, the H and R booth was just fire. It you was. walked into the South Hall and you stood at the H and R booth for like an hour, and they were giving out posters and uh, the necklace things, lanyards. lanyards. Yeah. That place was awesome. Yeah, H&R so definitely did sick. a good job with their booth this year. Yeah, um, they had great cars. It was it was yeah. amazing. Um, so another one. Let's talk about that BMW Z4. It was like a wide body roadster. Yeah. Uh, again, with the same kind of like Nardo gray. gray. This flat, uh, light, non-metallic gray is like I feel like the color of 2015 and 16. It is. Yeah. Uh, which I, I love it. I don't care how many cars so do use I. the same color. So it's do awesome. I. Yeah. Uh, and Chris, what producers Chris is uh, FJ. His FJ is that color. Yeah, he's got an FJ. So that he's color. hot in the streets. He yep. knows what's going on. Yes. Yeah. But this Z4. Incredible. We had the mirrors. They were moved up to the hood. There were. It was there like were a full wide body. Full wide body. Side exhaust. Um, so many detail. A, a huge rear diffuser. I mean, it just yep. it was super aggressive. I remember. I remember. I had. Yeah. It also had um, short like short window. Yeah, a, a, a shortened windshield to go with the roadster look, and it also had the um, roast roadster style back end. Um, there was also these awesome body line paintings. If the body wasn't aggressive enough, it had big lines to accentuate the body curves which yeah. normally might look overdone or like right forgive the term ricer or something like yeah. that but it looked on it looked point. great it looked great the whoever interior, built this car yeah first of all it was a manual transmission so it's right up my alley it, it had was a, supercharged i believe it had an ess sticker on there there you go um, that's what that means supercharged supercharged yeah. it had f80 brand new like bmw m3 seats Red interior, like diamond quilted. Diamond quilted everything. Wood shift knob. Uh, painted dash. Same painted color dash. As the car. the yeah. dash was smoothed and painted the same color as the Which, body. I mean, the fact that the windshield was so small yeah, with the painted like dash that big. looked. I mean, it just looked incredible. Look, yeah. I mean, well, how much does a custom windshield cost like that? I mean, the dude probably spent five grand on, on the, the windshield. windshield. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it had rays, I think, wheels. It, they did, yeah, they did look like some raised um, uh, wheels. Big, meaty tires. Which is a Japanese company, raised bulk. Yeah, um, um, but yeah. high-end forged wheels. Definitely. It was just insane. And again, that, that was a type of car, like, we spent probably 15 minutes looking at it, and it wasn't until I was spending an hour editing the video that I was like, dude, look at all these freaking details on this yeah. thing. It is off the hook. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the most slept-on cars of SEMA. You get a lot of coverage of Slammington, mm -hmm. a lot of co cover of the John Seibel 964, and a lot of mm -hmm. other cars. But that car was kind of tucked in the back. It was, yeah. It but wasn't it was in a straight fire. Yeah, it was. So it was, good. It was amazing. So good. Um, so right next to it, I think right next to the Z4 was the Toyo Tires booth. They're a big supporter of the modified and the tuner. They are. Big supporter. Yeah. So shout out to Toyo. They're, uh, they sponsor a lot of cars. Yeah, they Mark do. Mark P, um, is he sponsored by Toyo? Mark P might be sponsored by everything. Shout, Shout out, out to Mark P. <laughs> I don't know what he's sponsored by, but he's yeah. got a crazy Mark IV. Yeah. All um, sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, so Toyo Tires. What was your favorite car in the Toyo Tires? Uh, Hit me. You know what? Because this I'm car a, looked I'm like a, you. I'm a, I'm, a bit of a, I'm a bit of a baller. I like mm -hmm. the floss. I mm -hmm. like big body cars, big body he's Euros. He's got a 1990. 1998 S500. Um, <laughs> it's a four-door if it was a coupe. Yeah. I, it would it would be built by now, but it is a four door. It's a four door, but um, he loves big body cars. So this car, love, yeah. when, when I saw it, I'm like, oh, all right, I'm gonna go take a bathroom break because I took about 20 minutes yeah. just just looking at it. He's gonna need to have a moment with this car. It. What was um, it, man? Uh, uh, Rolls Royce Wraith. Ooh, a Wraith. What Wraith. Is, what's a Wraith? Uh, so a Wraith is basically two door Phantom. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it's it, it was it looked amazing. It had. Um, I'm not sure what kind of kit on there. There was definitely a kit. It did on have there. a body kit. It did have a kit, but it wasn't too loud. No. Nope. It was definitely um, it, it flowed well with the car. It had some wheels on there. They were they were some turbine. I remember. I think maybe yeah. they were like 15 spoke or something. Yeah, but the Be most sure to check the out the most your unique part was the um, the the red accents the red, on the, the car. Accents. The car was was black. The red was it was a. Uh, uh, almost, a, it was definitely a, a shiny red. It was like a brushed red yeah, it was, wrap. 
which I, I've seen cars done in this wrap, uh -huh. but I've never seen the chrome sections of a car wrapped only. Mm -hmm. And, and I, that's what I thought was so unique. It's like a subtle touch, yeah. but it wasn't subtle because it was red. Yeah. But like either people wrap their car or they don't wrap the car. Exactly. This person had deep black car, but with all the chrome accents wrapped in this brushed red. And normally you would think that that might look kind of gaudy. Nope. Um, it a hundred percent worked. It looked phenomenal. Gangster. The car looked so good. I can imagine driving down sunset car full of just having chicks wave at you yeah. like beautiful Patrice, girls Patrice, yeah. pick, me up, pick me up pick me up me just <laughs> like nah girl nah, I ain't got nah, time for you nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that um, car yeah was I absolutely love that car they also had what do they have a was it a four or five eight yeah it's called the Misha designs I never heard of this company before SEMA but it was a Misha designs a Ferrari 458 and it was a, a damn aggressive kit on this 458 uh, rear diffuser outlining the triple tailpipes, kind of like an F40 look. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, super aggressive side sills with the carbon um, side skirts. Um, it was it was wrapped in matte red, but it had accents in like in, a brushed in the, in red. The brushed red. And I don't know yeah. if they coordinated that between the been, you know. between the Wraith and the 458, but they were sitting right next to each other. And for a Ferrari and a Rolls Royce, it looked like they were belong to the same garage. Definitely. Toya booth. Great job. Yeah, props uh, to you. Yeah, you guys did a great job this year. One of our other favorite cars uh, wasn't inside at the South Hall. It was actually outside. Which I was surprised. I know. Because it was a car that was phenomenal. It you was know, awesome. It, it, I, think it was I definitely feel like it could have taken the place of some of the cars that were inside. Definitely. And it was nice to see. It was as a classic build. We're talking about this Outlaw 356 Speedster. I think it was in the Cooper Tires build. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, Cooper yeah. Tires? Cooper Tires. Right? Y'all know them? <laughs> yeah. Cooper Tires booth. Uh, they specialize in vintage and older tires for, for vintage cars. They do like white walls and you can get tires like red and yellow lettering. Um, I'm not talking about like the sticker kits. I'm talking about tires with actual red and yellow lettering. Um, and that's where this car was. And this car is actually from Santa Ana. It's a local Orange County build. Um, but man, it's a Nardo Gray, another Porsche, yeah. 356 Speedster, yeah. replica. We're not talking original. This is a replica. Yeah. Um, but a very well done. But replica. this car was to the nines. It Every was. single piece of it. So Every many single piece of details. metal had like some um, engraving in it. It was. I'm. I mean, for me, seeing seeing that engraving, I know a lot of lowrider guys yeah. like to do a lot yeah. of engraving in, it was in like all that. sorts of parts on their cars, and the detail on that blow, blows me away. When I saw it on this 356, that's something I, I could tell that he got that inspiration yeah. from that scene. Yeah. So it's no surprise that he built an amazing car, but I've never seen any car really built with this much detail. Well, first of all, it was a convertible, mm -hmm. so you could see everything in it, but literally every piece of metal on it was polished and engraved, mm -hmm. and ev every single piece was polished and engraved. And then every single other part was wrapped in red leather, in red leather. with some cross type of cross-stitching yeah. on it. Um, in the trunk, he had, um, <laughs> he had like a suitcase outline covering the gas tank, so it didn't look like a big gas tank, it just looked like a red leather suitcase. And then in front of that, he had, um, small, those little uh, liquor store alcohol bottles. They were Hennessy bottles. He were they Hennessy? They were definitely, yeah, Hen they were, nice. they were Henny bottles. <laughs> I noticed that. Um, and then the, and then the, in the rear seat, he had a Macintosh amplifier, again, wrapped in red leather. Wow. And then in the trunk, he had all the panels um, to the side and above the deck lid, um, red leather cross stitch. And then the engine, I mean, it was an air-cooled Volkswagen engine, but it had carbs, red anodized carbs. And then, of course, here. what kind of wheels did he have? Uh, 1552 Magnus Walker wheels. These uh, ones right here. They look phenomenal. And you know what? The These car. wheels literally make me want to buy a Porsche. When they came out, I'm like, yo, I got to sell my Audi TTRS. I need a Porsche just for these wheels alone. I love them. Can you... Get those wheels and other, any other bolt pattern? They will only make only? these in 5x130 Porsche bolt really? pattern. Nope. And I feel like the style um, it only dictates really works the for pattern. Porsche. They don't want to mess it up. Um, but it's basically a Porsche Fuchs style, um, but updated and mm -hmm. uh, modernized. Definitely, um, yeah. It's Magnus. It's a teamwork between Magnus Walker and 1552. Um, 
amazing design wheels, but his, they were color matched, Nardo gray. Yep. And then around the edge, they had like, to match the interior, they like that red, dark red, yeah, red pinstripe. Stripe. Yeah. And I believe it was hand painted. It looked, dude, uh, this guy's taste was just perfect with this car. Detail wise, he was covering everything he could. I absolutely love the car. Yeah. We talked um, to him for like five, 10 minutes and he said he's already had multiple offers. He thought it was going to be sold before SEMA. I was bummed to hear that because I wanted to maybe go see it and do some uh, follow up video on it after. I'm glad he hasn't sold it yet. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he's holding out for more money, which is what we told him to do. Um, but man, what a freaking car. Amazing. Amazing. Coolest 356 Speedster I've ever seen in Definitely. life. And um, most detailed and customized car I've ever seen ever. Be sure to check out the video. You do yeah. not want right. to miss the details. Again, we've got car. like at least a minute spent on that car. And don't fast forward through it because otherwise you're going to miss stuff. I'm telling you, the shifter, the steering wheel, the brake pedals, every the single thing that's aluminum has got some etching that, in it. Yeah. And you got to check it out. It's yeah. freaking insane. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, and coming up next, we have some wheel of cool for sale find yeah uh, this one's kind of crazy as we do every week this yeah. one i found this one on the samba and this is uh, a site that i frequent this is where actually i found my Eurovan. i have a 99 Eurovan camper that uh was my most recent car acquisition in the fleet <laughs> it's just most I recent car i, I love bought the variety of cars <laughs> that you have ttrs vw vanagon it's a Eurovan, bro. Eurovan. You know, I'm going to call it a van again just because. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> and a, uh, and well, a Passat CC. Yep. Yeah, yep. all of them phenomenal. So I like the Samba. The Samba specializes in mainly Volkswagens, but they also dabble in Porsches, um, air-cooled Porsches and newer Porsches, but mainly older stuff. Um, so that's how I was clicking through, doing my fantasy shopping, you know, just kind of relaxing at the end of the day. And I stumbled upon this. You gotta check it out. It's a 1980 Porsche 930 go kart. Is that what they call it? Is it called a 911 Junior? That's, that's what, what they, they call, call it. it. Yep. Yeah. I wonder if that's the official name from Probably. Porsche. 911 official Junior. model number? Because this was actually a go kart number. built by Porsche. This is not a replica or some kit car that somebody made in nope. their garage. This is a Porsche made go kart. So your rich kids could roll right alongside the rich daddy yep. in their Porsches. It's, and yeah, this thing is insane. It's got a 50 cc Honda motor. Uh, was it two speed? It was. I'm. I believe it was two speed. Has a clutch. It's got a I clutch saw pedal. Pedals. I don't know what kids can drive a clutch, but a kid who's a kid <laughs> whose dad is willing to yeah. buy him a 911. Teach junior. him early. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Early. Come yeah. on, get him in the Porsche uh, go kart so you can get him in the race car and get him out on the track. And make you some money. Yep. Even I though mean, there's not much I money. I mean, maybe buy a, uh, an RWB Junior kit. Have uh, Nakai-san Junior come out. Oh, my God. A, somebody needs to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that. But the price on this says or best offer. Which and basically means, I, I mean, don't know. Pull, up, pull up with a, with a bag full of cash. It says do some research and then offer me some money. What, is that, that's the exact words that's on there, right? That's what it says. If you're really interested, do some <laughs> research on it. And then show up. <laughs> then show up. Basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, man, it's incredible. It's got Porsche seats that are recently redone. It literally looks like a Porsche 911 930 convertible. If you saw just pictures of that without any people standing next to it, you'd think it was a normal car. It mm -hmm. looks like a legit Porsche 911 930. It is the freshest go-kart or little person's car I've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It is. It's fast. What would you do? You think you can get a set of these built for it? I wonder they if they would do it. do it. They do I it. I wonder if they could do them up. it. Matt, Magnus, Matt, what's up? Magnus, Let's do it. you guys can need we get to buy this car. You single lugs. <laughs> single lugs. Let's do it. You can do it, man. Uh, yeah, that one is cool. That is a wheelie cool find for Be you. Be sure to check that out. Yeah. It's on the Samba. Uh, please also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. We will be releasing new videos, new shows every Wednesday, and new videos every Friday consistent 52 weeks a year as always follow us on twitter and instagram at wheelie underscore cool like us on facebook for exclusive really cool content yep. until next time i'm Stu, and i'm easy have a wheelie cool day guys peace Thanks, guys